you uh, you know exactly what the shirts are supposed to say? This kids are supposed to be wearing a special shirt. Is it grow strong? Or? Yeah. What is the shirt? Fight like grow. I knew it was something like I want to be able to say it exactly right. Fight like grow. Is that going to be the shirt they actually wear for the game? Yes. Yeah, okay. I thought so. I thought that's what he said. Hello, everyone, and welcome to KWBJ Live, where high school baseball is getting ready to take place, where the St. James is going to be hosting the Patterson Lumberjacks. We're in Vachery, Louisiana, on the campus of St. James High School, and we are ready for some high school baseball on the field right now. You can see this, the starters for... Um, St. James Wildcats. Starting for the Wildcats will be at third base, Cade Becknell, followed by center fielder, Liam Kosnov. The catcher is Andre Mahler. The day's starting pitcher is Landon Gravois, a sophomore. In left field is Cam LeBlanc. First baseman is an eighth grader today. It's Andon, uh, Andon Mahler. Right fielder, Noah Landry. Second baseman, Landon Rome. And the shortstop is Brandon Ciano. Lead off hitter for the Lumberjacks is Kristen Bobbitt. He is the center fielder. On deck is shortstop Brandon, I mean, uh, Landon Bernadou, the shortstop. Bat second. That's a ground ball to third. Makes this catch over the first in time for the first out. Hey, coming to the plate now is shortstop for the Lumberjacks, Landon Bernadou. This pitch misses for a ball. Low and away. Ball two. Two balls. No strikes. One away. Nobody on base. We're in the top of the first inning. And Aaron, we talk sometimes about the, the peculiarities of high school sports in 2024. It's all about power ratings, not so much about the district. So what you have here. These are district rivals not playing a district game. Uh, the district standings this year will be made up of one one uh, visit from each team. They will not play a home and home. This officially is a non-district game. They'll play later on the season uh, in Patterson, and that one will be for the district or for district standings. Yeah, things have changed up along those lines, Chris. As uh, Bernadou draws the walk, he'll go to first base, and that'll bring to the plate. First baseman, Lindsey Howard. But no, things have changed a lot with, with, with the way the playoffs are seated and how you earn that spot and your, how you place within your district is, is not nearly as important as it once was. It's, it all depends on uh, who you played, how big a school, and whether you won or lost. So. First pitch to Howard was a ball. This one's a little bit low for a ball two. A very young baseball team for the St. James Wildcats. They have only one senior on the team, and that's uh, an injured player. He, um, let's see if I can see his name. Okay, Caden Labatt. Yeah. 
Gaden Labar, I knew I had it here somewhere, but I got some help here in the press box. So he's a senior, has a sprained ankle, and uh, is not playing. He's the only senior on the team. Everybody else are um, from eighth grade through junior. So I think he starts uh, three juniors, three sophomores, and some freshmen. Okay, also drawing the walk is Lindsey Howard. So that'll put runners on first and second base with one away. And that'll bring to the plate the cleanup hitter, third baseman, Ryland Jennings. Jennings bats with one out. Runners on first and second. This pitch is high and tight for a ball one, 1-0. One oh. And you'll remember we saw Patterson early in the season uh, in their own tournament against Centerville, and we had mentioned a, a, this is a, a heavy underclassman team, had a lot of turnover, and they were feeling the inexperience at that time. They were playing a little sloppy, struggling on, uh, especially on defense, but uh, lately, you can see the, the seasoning starting to kick in. They've got an 8-10 and 10 record, not, not too bad. That puts them uh, 24th in the power rating, so they are right there in the edge of fighting for a playoff spot, uh, but playing much better ball than they were at the beginning of the season. Okay, Coach uh, Giat, Louis Giat, comes out to talk to his pitcher, just wants to settle him down. He uh, feels like uh, he's struggling a little bit with his control but he's got a lot of ability. So Landon Gravois on the mound. A 1-0 pitch. This one lowered inside for ball two, 2-0. Two Jennings looked like he really wanted to get after that one. But right now, you got a pitcher struggling to find a strike zone. You don't help him by swinging at anything bad. This is a soft liner off the end of the bat. Makes the catch that short, flips it to second base, gets the double play. Runner on second base took off on the line drive. It did not get through, and they turned the double play. Yeah, it's disappointing for the Lumberjacks right now. Jennings kind of caught it off the end of the bat. Didn't quite get as, as good a piece of uh, aluminum or graphite or whatever material it is as he would have liked right at the shortstop on an easy play to turn to. Okay, in the middle of the first inning, Lumberjack zero, Wildcats zero. Wildcats coming to bat in the bottom of the first. First three hitters for the Wildcats will be third baseman Cade Becknell. Center fielder Liam Kosnov, followed by catcher Andre Mahler. Kind of similar teams right now. St. James, we said Patterson is off to an 8 and 10 start on the year. St. James is 7 and 9, and they are currently the 22nd seed. So, also a young team, as you mentioned. So, we got Kind of team similar in abilities, similar in record, similar where they are in the playoff hunt. This should be a good game. I think so too. On the mound for the Lumberjacks is uh, Billy Caldwell, and behind the plate will be VJ Bird. This is Caldwell's third start of the season. He comes in with an ERA of 5.16. No decisions yet. 0-0 oh, no. is his record. Beautiful day here. We, we didn't know, Chris, uh, original weather forecast had a second round of rain coming through here this afternoon, but uh, looks like we're going to miss it. It's beautiful out here, a little breezy, a little wind, wind blowing out of the uh, outfield. Center field kind of faces uh, southeast, and we're supposed to have a northwest wind throughout this whole ball game. Should stay in that 10 to 12 mile per hour speed. So 
Yeah, disappointing that we did not get a game in yesterday. That was, uh, we were all set up to do Assumption and, and Morgan City. Game was scheduled to start later in the evening. They moved it up. They changed their mind. They said, let's hold off. Let's see what the weather does. I think at this point they might be a little disappointed because the, the weather never really broke the way they thought it might. I think they could have gotten in last night. So I believe they're going to try to schedule that for sometime next week. Okay, ready to start the uh, bottom of the first. And at the plate is third baseman, Cade Becknell. His pitch a little high and tight for ball one. The 1 0 pitch. Misses outside. Ball two. Uh, set uh, Lumberjacks defense for you. And then left field is House. Center field is Bobbitt. Right field, Marine. Third base is Jennings. Bernadou's at shortstop. Rochelle at second base. Howard on first base. You pitch your Billy Caldwell and you catch a VJ Bird. Last pitch missed for ball three. 3 0 to count. Lead off hitter Becknell. And it's a call, strike one. This Ooh. catches that inside corner. Always wait for the umpire's call on a 3-0 pitch. Always. Because you're not going to influence the call of the ball, I guarantee you. You might influence in the call of strike. This popped up high to center field. Center field is going back. This is going to get over his head. Becknell heads to second base. Comes in with the stand-up double to lead off the top bottom, rather, of the first inning. So with nobody out and a runner on second base, your center fielder, Liam Kosnow, comes to the plate. We were talking before the game. We, uh, the weather forecast was for a, a fairly decent breeze blowing straight out. And I think that, that fooled the center fielder. He did not expect that ball to carry the way it did. And you can see the trees in center field kind of moving that way. First pitch misses low and away for what well, actually is the second pitch, ball two. 2-0 to count, runner on second base, squaring the bunt, pulls it back, pitches inside, throw goes down to second, everybody stays put. Two balls, one strike. This pitch misses outside. Ball three. And this is low and inside for ball four. So center fielder uh, Kosnov draws the walk. That puts runners on first and second with nobody out. That'll bring to the plate the catcher, Andre Mahler. Mahler bats in the three hole, takes the first pitch for ball one. Oh, that was called a strike. That was a strike. That was a strike. That was a breaking ball, I guess. And this line drive over the third baseman's head is going to drop in. One run will score. Runner on second will be held, so the runner on first must stop also. So Mahler singles. That scores Becknell. Wildcats take 1-0 lead. Kosnov moves to second base. Nobody out. The pitcher, Landon Gravois, comes to the plate. He bats in the cleanup spot. This pitch catches the outside corner for a call. Strike one. Swings at a breaking ball. Doesn't hit it, but it gets away from the catcher. Both runners do advance. They'll now stand on second and third with nobody out. And is this a pinch runner or a courtesy runner? 
Uh, depends who's he coming in for. The runner at second. In, coming in for uh, Mahler, who's the catcher, so that's going to be a courtesy runner. Pitchers and catchers can have courtesy runners. The 0-2 pitch to the cleanup hitter, Gravois. This popped up. This will be out of play behind the third base dugout. Count will stay. Nothing in two. Nobody out. One run has scored. There's a breaking ball that stays up high for a ball. Chris, that's not a bad pitch on an 0-2 count. You're kind of hoping he goes after that, but uh, he held off. One ball, two strikes. This popped up to left field. Left fielder moving over near the line. I can't see behind the dugout. Maybe you could pick it up, Chris. But uh, one run scores. Here comes the second run. Two runs will score. The two runners that were on base scored. And Gravois stands on second base. Now we lose a, a lot of left field, especially all the way down the line. Mm -hmm. uh, so I couldn't see what happened. Yeah. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, give him the double. At the plate now, uh, the left fielder, Cam LeBlanc, batting in the five hole. He fouls this straight back into the net for strike one. It's been a feast or famine season for St. James, as we mentioned, a seven and nine record. But in every win but one and every loss but one, the winning team has scored at least 10 runs. So they've been giving them up in bunches on occasion, but they've been scoring in bunches at times too. Breaking ball called strike two. 0-2 oh, to count on LeBlanc. And this tipped into the catcher's face mask. Count stays, nothing in two. Caldwell struggled with his control over the first few batters. Uh, lately he's been Able to throw strikes, but the uh, Wildcats have been hitting him. This is a breaking ball that stays way up and inside. One ball, two strikes. Runner on second, no outs. Swing and a miss for the first out of the bottom of the first inning. LeBlanc goes down swinging, one away. That'll bring to the plate the first baseman, Andon Mahler. Fastball called strike one. Caldwell breathes a sigh of relief. Always feels good when you can get that first run under your belt. The first strikeout, rather. This ground ball to third is going to be fielded in foul territory. It's almost a swinging bunt, dribbling right down the line and then towards the end, bounced. We have out, we have a, a turf infield. One of the reasons we're able to play this ball game today, I'm sure, because uh, this morning they got about two inches of rain. Yeah, very similar setup to what they had in Santa Mall last week when we covered the Berwick game. Except the uh, in the foul territory, the turf does not go all the way down to the fence. Right. The outfield, uh, no standing water, but it is wet. And this is a foul tip for strike three. So Caldwell uh, got in a little bit of trouble with back-to-back uh, -back strikeouts. Yeah, he's filling up the strike zone now after falling behind on the first couple of hitters. He's gotten ahead on these last two. At the plate right now is the right fielder, Noah Landry. He bats with two outs and a runner on second base. 
Standing on second base is Gravois. Unless, I don't know, Chris, I didn't see a courtesy runner for him, so I'm going to assume he's still out there. No, I believe that's that's him. That's yeah. Gravois. That's called strike one. Owen won the count on Landry. Landry bats in the seventh spot. It's a breaking ball, stays up high. Ball one, one ball, one strike, two outs, and one runner on. I can't believe how nice the weather is this afternoon. <laughs> After what was supposed to be not so nice. Huh? Well, it was <laughs> sure ugly yesterday. Oh, and this yeah. morning. Yeah. <laughs> All day yesterday through throughout the, the night into the morning. And call strike two and get him. Oh, the runner goes to, to third. So two balls, two strikes. Runner now on third base. Noah Landry to the right fielder for the Wildcats is at the plate. And this uh call strike. Fastball on the outside part of the plate for call strike three. So started out a little slow, Chris, but then he uh, struck out three in a row. But the Wildcats were able to pick up three runs off of three hits and a walk. And let's thank a few sponsors while we have a moment. Lapco Manufacturing. Feel safe, work smart, look good. With Lapco FR, www.lapco.com. Taco Bell in Morgan City and Bayou Vista. Open late night, delivery through DoorDash. Bayou Bend Fitness Center, 1209 Northwest Boulevard in Franklin. A healthier you begins at Bayou Bend. Conrad Industries, serving St. Mary Parish and the marine industry since 1948. Conrad wishes all of our local teams good luck. And Core Physical Therapy and Sports Performance, here to restore the quality of life you deserve. 611 Brashear Avenue in Morgan City. Okay, we'll move to the top of the second inning. Wildcats lead 3-0. Gravois stays on the plate, I mean, stays on the mound. <coughs> First three hitters for the Lumberjacks. We'll start out with the five-hole hitter, catcher, V.J. Bird. He'll be followed by the pitcher, Billy Caldwell. And then the DH, Kobe Marcel. Marcel bats in the place of left fielder, Noah House. This is Gravois' fifth start of the season, by the way. He's 0-4, which, considering the way I saw the scores, man, that's a good chance he, he didn't get any run support in those games. Yeah. First pitch misses low for ball one. Is a fastball up a little bit for a ball two, two and oh. Here's a fastball that catches the outside corner for a call strike one, two balls, one strike. Bird leading off the top of the second. This pitch misses low and away for a ball three, three balls and one strike. This popped up high. Third baseman calls for it and stays with it. That's Becknell. So with one away, the pitcher will come to the plate. That's Billy Caldwell. This pitch, fastball at the knees for a call, strike one. Caldwell has been one of Patterson's best hitters of the year, hitting 313 so far with a 
11 RBI. Swings at this one and fouls it straight back into the net. Nothing in two. Got a couple of doubles. That's his only extra base hits of the year. Ooh. Ooh, call strike on the outside corner for strike three. So two away. If you say so. Yeah. I would say that was a thick portion of the, the black on the right. outside of the plate. Yeah. The DH at the plate, Kobe Marcel. Fastball outside. Ball one. And this is fastball for call strike two. <coughs> I'm sorry, one strike one. one, one and one. Second pitch, one is the ball, one is the strike. There's strike two, call strike two, one ball, two strikes. Two outs and nobody on. At the plate is the pitcher, Billy Caldwell. Now this is Marcel. Oh, I'm sorry, Marcel, the DH. Marcel is hitting an even 200 on the year. Also has a couple of doubles. Swing and a miss. Strike three. So three up, three down for the Jacks. Ravois has faced the minimum through, uh, no, I take it back. He's, he's faced one above the minimum. Right. Three, yeah, two uh, innings. Yeah. He turned a double play to get out of the first with two right. runners on base. Right, right. He had a couple walks. He had a couple runners, but uh, like I said, you got that double play. The pitcher's best friend. We'll move to the bottom of the second inning. With the Wildcats on top three nothing, they will send to the plate the eight hole hitter, second baseman Landon <clears throat> Rome, and he'll be followed by the shortstop Brandon Ciano. Then we'll move to the top of the batting order in Cade Becknell. Uh, thanks to head St. James head coach Lou Gigot for allowing us to be here today. We'll be back again next week. Uh, when they take on Berwick, that's on Thursday. We got two games scheduled next week. Talk to you a little bit more about that a little later in the show. Caldwell will stay on the mound. Caldwell completes his warm-up tosses. And Bird throws down to second base. Umpire says, let's play baseball. Bottom of the second, 3-0. Wildcats on top. And it's a call, strike one. Both pitchers started out with uh, control problems, but they both have seemed to settle in and hitting that strike zone now. This popped up high. It's going to be out of play behind the press box. That'll be strike two. Nothing in two is the count for Rome. Rome has yet to get a hit in 15 at-bats this season. This misses, low and away for ball one. Rome is a freshman. The shortstop and the second baseman are both freshmen. And the first baseman is a uh, eighth grader. 
But anyway, Rome looks at strike three for the first out. That'll bring to the plate the shortstop, Brandon Ciano, like I just mentioned, also a freshman. Very young Wildcat baseball team. That might uh, cause some problems this year, but that means everybody will be back next year with the exception of the uh, injured player. He's the only senior. Ciano gets hit by a pitch. That'll give him a free pass to first base. I was about to say, Caldwell really has settled in nicely with, mm -hmm. after some early control issues, and I'm glad he did that before I said it. <laughs> you cannot call the jinx on me. All right. We move to the top of the batting order for Cade Becknell. Becknell doubled in the first inning to lead off the bottom of the first. He also scored. Becknell's hitting 313 on the season. That's not including that opening that leadoff hit. This pitch is up high. Bird goes down to first base. Another pitch up high. Bird checks the runner, trying to keep him close. Becknell's a leadoff hitter, so we're going to assume he's a base runner, a good base runner. And he fakes the run to go, hit high to right field. Out there in right field is Marine making the catch for the second out. That'll bring to the plate the center fielder, Liam, Liam Kosnov, and he walked and scored a run in the bottom of the first. This popped up straight back behind the press box, out of play. Nothing in one to count with two outs and a runner on first base. This pitch misses inside, ball two. I'm sorry, ball one. one. One ball, one strike. And that's called strike. One ball, two strikes. Two outs, runner on first. Runner's going. And the line drive, a ground ball hit right where the shortstop was. He moved over to cover second base. Good job by hitting by Kaznov. He hit that ball right where the uh, shortstop was. And that'll have runners now on first and third. Chris, without that runner going, it could very probably would have been a, a double play ball hit right there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it was a hit and run call, but it worked out perfectly. Mm -hmm. Kazanov slapped it right up the middle. And as you said, right where the shortstop would have been had he not slid over to cover for the possible steal. But that was tailor-made double ball, double play ball otherwise. So good move by the offense if it was planned that way or not. Runners going. And nobody there to cover. He made a wild throw, hits the runner. The ball bounces into the outfield. The runner will score. And that's Kosnov. He got hit with the throw. Yeah, it looked to me like Caldwell realized he had a pickoff, and in mid throw, realized nobody was covering the bag so he he tried to adjust and and throw the ball directly to the second baseman and ended up hitting Kozinov instead this pitch catches that outside corner he's got a big outside corner nothing in one This pitch gets away from Bird. Runner will move to third. 
At the plate is the catcher, Andre Mahler. Andre is a junior, but his brother, younger brother, is an eighth grader and starts at first base. <coughs> this popped up to right field. Right fielder gets a beat on it, makes the catch for the third out. So after two complete innings of play, the Wildcats pick up uh, another run here in the second to make it four to zero for the Lumberjacks. And our thanks to Patterson State Bank, free checking, great rates, low down payment, home loan options, and the best in mobile banking, PSB, quality community banking since 1925. GJCurbside.com, your complete online grocery store including local and regional products. Check our website for delivery options. From our curb to yours, GJ Curbside. Oscar St. Mary, quality health care close to home. Lafayette Electric, 1207 Greenwood Street in Morgan City, proud supporter of high school baseball in the Tri-City area. And Allen's Communications, a locally owned TV cable, internet, and telephone service. Call 384-8335. All right, we move to the top of the third. <coughs> we will start that off with the number eight hitter for the Lumberjacks, and that's the right fielder who just uh, caught uh, two fly balls the previous half inning. That's uh, Cameron Marine. On deck will be second baseman, Chance Rochelle. And then we'll go to the top of the batting order in Christian Bobbitt. Marine is a 345 hitter coming into the day. Staying on the mound for the Wildcats is Gravois. Marine goes after this one. <coughs> Grounds it towards the third base dugout. Strike one. Goes after a low one. Swing and a miss. Strike two, nothing in two. This pitch is wide for ball one. One ball, two strikes. Got timeout called. Now play ball. One ball, two strikes. This is popped up, straight back, out of play. Count stays, a ball in two strikes at the plate. Right fielder, Cameron Marine. <laughs> Ground ball to third, scooped up, throw to first in time, one away. Nice play by Becknell at third base. Yeah, you mentioned this is a young infield for St. James, but so far they're solid today. Mm -hmm. That'll bring to the plate second baseman, Chance Rochelle. This catches that outside corner for a call, strike one. This is a soft liner, but uh, gets through the hole between first and second for a single. And the nine-hole hitter for the Lumberjacks gets their first base hit of the game. And that was Rochelle's first official at-bat of the season. Wow. So, so he's, he's batting a 1,000. Batting a 1,000. 
with 16, 17 games into the season, he's batting a thousand. So we move to the top of the batting order in Christian Bobbitt, the center fielder. He grounded out to third base to start the ball game. Throw goes to first, gets away from the first base, and started to go to second, but uh, his first base coach called him back. Didn't quite go far enough. Not a bad decision. You want to get your runners in scoring position, but right now you, you need base runners. Yeah. Healthy lead at first. Swing and a miss for strike one. This pitch is low for a ball one. Bobbitt is hitting an even 400 on the year. He's a leadoff hitter for the Lumberjacks. This pitch up in the strike zone, but in the strike zone for a call, strike two. And he is the leading hitter for Patterson, other than the now perfect Rochelle. Yep. This pitch up and away for ball two. Ooh, chases one inside, doesn't get it. Strike three, swinging. That's for the second out. So with two outs, and a runner on first base, two-hole hitter, shortstop, Landon Bernadou. And was he chasing or was he avoiding? <laughs> well, I'm not sure, but he, he, I think if he had to do over again, he'd have taken that pitch. Okay, runner goes, that's uh, Rochelle, and steals second base, so he'll stand on second base with two outs. Bernadou at the plate, he drew a walk, and he got doubled off on the uh, line drive hit to the shortstop in the first inning. This is a soft line to the right that's gonna drop in front of the right fielder. Gonna hold the runner at third base. Landry out in right field gets it in quick. Run could not score. So that'll leave us with runners on first and second base with two outs. And we'll bring to the plate the First baseman, Lindsey Howard. Howard bats in the three hole. He drew a walk in the first inning. So officially 0-0 for the game. Bernadou going to second. Mahler fakes the throw and looks at third, but everybody stays put. Runners now stand on second and third with two outs. And your three-hole hitter at the plate, left-hander, Lindsey Howard. Howard's 333 with two doubles and a triple. One of those right here would be nice. Not going to get it. To the third baseman in fair territory, calls for it, and makes the catch. So no run score on two hits. So in the middle, of the third inning, it's Wildcats four and Lumberjacks zero. I want to thank you all for joining us this afternoon on KWBJ Live. A little early Friday afternoon baseball. Don't forget to hit that like button and, uh, while you're here and, and subscribe as well. We're going to be back on the air Tuesday and once again hitting the road. This time, the long trip down Bayou Lafouche to cut off for a district game between the South Lafouche Tarpons and the Assumption Mustangs. First pitch on that game will be 6 o'clock. So join us then, Tuesday, right here on KWBJ Live. And everybody else out there, if you can make it to some of these high school games, please come out and support your local high school teams. Trust me, 
They love seeing big crowds in the stands. They love hearing people cheering for them. They, they like to see you cheer for the other team if you're for the other team. So when you can. No, I, I, I don't think they like that. I think they do. <laughs> I, I think they do. <laughs> Especially when they know they did something well and they know it upsets the other people. They like that part of it especially. But uh, they like this crowd is my point, is they like to see people in the stands. And it's a and nice crowd know. today. Yep, nice crowd for a three o'clock afternoon game. They call this Chamber of Commerce weather. This is it, you got <laughs> it here. You might not have said that at six, seven o'clock this morning. No. But, uh, <laughs> by mid-morning, uh, in Morgan City anyway, by mid-morning the sun was shining and it's been bright ever since. Okay, we'll start the bottom of the third inning with the cleanup hitter and today's pitcher, Landon Gravois. Gravois doubled, got left on base in the uh, top, I mean, rather bottom of the first inning. Looks at the first pitch for a ball one. His fastball outside corner. Strike one, one ball, one strike. Gravois comes in batting 324 with four doubles. He has a breaking ball for a call, strike two, one ball, two strikes. This popped up high, left field. Left fielder comes up on it, but then he gets over his head. Sliding at second base for a sliding double is Gravois. He's uh, two for two with two doubles. I don't know, Chris, he's kind of looking into the sun, so I don't know if he misjudged it or like we talked about earlier, that wind. Uh, yeah, that could wind be the sun, could him. be the wind. I'm, I, Probably a little bit of both. Well, he's gonna come out the game. That's a bit of a surprise, which which may indicate maybe one of those balls hitting the first inning to left field that we couldn't see might have been an error. I don't know, did you pick up a number of who went out there to take I, I believe place? it's 27. Okay, let's see, 27 for Patterson would be Colin Pinho, or I think it's pronounced Pinyu, Pinyu. Right. So House was being DH'd for. And what that move tells me that no matter what we score it, in Coach Brett Dory's mind, that was an error. Yeah. Yeah. This popped up down the third baseline. In the bullpen. And in the bullpen for strike one. Again, down that third base line, when it gets to the outfield, we, uh, we're kind of blocked by the third base dugout. <coughs> Nothing in one, nobody out, runner on second. Now hitting is, uh, nope, wait, I'm on the wrong page. Cam LeBlanc, the left fielder. It's off the end of the bat, and it's going to drop in front of the center fielder. They're going to send one runner home. Slides home. And LeBlanc singles and picks up the RBI. So with a runner on first base, that'll bring to the plate first baseman and eighth grader, Andon Mahler.
Marla squares the bunt, pulls it back as the pitch misses outside. One ball, one strike. Aaron, I remember hearing a story about a major league outfielder who committed two errors on fly balls because of the sun in one inning. And after the second one, he went to the dugout and got a pair of sunglasses. And later on, somebody asked him, why didn't you go get the sunglasses after the first error? He said, I was embarrassed. He said, then why'd you go after the second one? He said, I was stupid. <laughs> Honesty. <huh? laughs> Again, squares the button, pulls it back. Three balls, one strike on Mahler, the first baseman. He struck out in the bottom of the first inning. Bird wants to appeal to first base. First base coach umpire says he did not go. So I would agree. Yep, I would too. And Coach Brett Dore wants to have a discussion with the pitcher, not the umpire. <laughs> okay, so nobody out. Runners on first and second. One run has scored. Five nothing. Wildcats lead over the Lumberjacks. And we're in the bottom of the third inning. A quick visit. Coach Bill Ray heads back to the dugout. And Caldwell stays on the mound for the Jacks. And my reading of hand gestures would say that Dore told Caldwell, you're the man here. You got to get through this. Yep. Wildcats were still in their huddle, their offensive huddle. And uh, umpire says, OK, that's enough. Let's play ball. Runners on first and second. Nobody out. One run has scored, squares the bunt, pulls it back. At the plate is the right fielder, Noah Landry. He's had a little bit of activity out there in right field so far tonight, or rather this afternoon. First pitch was a strike. This one misses outside. Again, he squares the bunt and pulls back. One ball, one strike. This is high and inside. Looks like Landry wants to move him over. He uh, shows the bunt on every pitch. Pulled it back all but once. This bunt, he gets it down, goes under the first baseman's glove. Pitcher picks it up. Able to make the catch was the second baseman. I don't know if he touched the bag. I think he was called, the runner was called safe. Yeah, his foot left the bag now, whether he got it down or not in time. Mm -hmm. Coach Doris sure thinks he did. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Doris gonna lose the argument. And... It, Usually the case when coaches argue with umpires. Yep. You might have a chance if you can appeal it and, uh, and he offers the repeal, appeal. It's fastball for a strike. At the plate is Landon Rome, second baseman. Rome struck out looking to start the second inning the bottom of the second inning. Ball gets away from Bird, but gets a good bounce off the backstop and comes right back to him. LeBlanc at third base, wanted to go, but changed his mind and went back to, went back to the bag. Base is loaded with nobody out. One one's the count. This is called strike two. One ball, two strikes. Wildcats with a chance of chance to blow this one open right now. It's something they've done several times this year. Howard comes way up on the grass. And for the second time, Rome looks at strike three. Big strikeout for Caldwell there. Huge. <laughs> That's the first out. It's the fifth hitter 
in the bottom of the inning, but uh, it's the first out. Getting the bunt down, coming home in time. Gets the force out at home. That was the nine hole hitter, Brandon Ciano, the shortstop. He's safe at first with the fielder's choice. Second out is made at home plate. So the base is still loaded. Back at the top of the batting order is Cade Becknell. He doubled and flied out to right field. He also scored a run. It's the ground ball hit back to the pitcher. He knocks it down but doesn't field it. A run will score. Everybody will be safe on the infield hit. Yeah, I believe that was going to be an infield hit. Even if Caldwell hadn't got a glove on it, that was a tough one. Yep. And this ball is hit to right center field and gets down. One run in, two runs in. The three, third run is coming home. And that was the uh, center fielder, Liam Kasna. And he hits his second hit of the game. It's a bases clearing double. Three run score. It's now nine nothing Wildcats up. This popped up to the short side. Bernadou makes the catch for the third out. But nine hitters come to the plate. Total five runs score. So after three complete innings of play, Wildcats out in front of the Lumberjacks by a score of 9-0. We mentioned we will be back here next week. That will be on Thursday to see the Berwick Panthers coming in. I'll have to have another look at the schedule and see if that's going to be a district game. Probably so as we get a little later in the season, but it will be Berwick at St. James. Uh, right here in Vashery, first pitch on that game scheduled for 5.30. Join us right here on KWBJ Live. Wildcats were able to pick up five runs on five hits. And by my score, and that'll give uh, nine hits and nine runs have scored. Had a few walks and at least one hit batter. Gravois with three shutout innings so far. His ERA on the year, 9.45, so. Holding a team down for the first time this season. Four appearances, all starts, so. There's, there, there's no outliers in there. Yeah, well, in the uh, in the third inning, Lumberjacks picked up their only two hits of the game, and hit by pitch right on the foot. That is the cleanup hitter, third baseman Brylan <coughs> Jennings. So he leads off the top of the fourth with a hit by pitch. So with nobody out, runner on first, five-hole hitter catcher V.J. Bird coming to the plate. He popped up to the third baseman in, uh, to start the second inning. There's a pitch on that outside corner for a call. Strike one, nothing in one. Birds hitting 325 on the season. Lumberjacks hit 296 as a team. That's not bad at all. There's a foul ball hit straight back into the wall. Strike two. Nothing in two to count with a runner on first base. 
This pitch misses outside. A little bit of a wild pitch. Uh, catcher got his glove on it, knocked it down, but couldn't come with it clean. And Jennings goes to second base. This popped up down the right field line behind the first base dugout. And I'm going to assume he Did couldn't catch it. Did not get to it, yeah. no, didn't get there. Good effort, though. Mm -hmm. In the press box here, we got great views of almost all of that field, but uh, behind each dugout, can't really pick up what happens back there. Yeah, the dugouts are pretty tall. Mm -hmm. they Taller are. than normal. Now that you mention it, you're absolutely right. <coughs> Hadn't realized that before, but uh, anyway. My powers of observation on such things as dugout height, particularly <laughs> strong. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> I'm looking at some of the uh, Wildcat players, and uh, it's like at least twice their height, whatever their height is. This is popped up high on the infield. Second baseman makes the call and the catch. That's Rome at second base. Good communication for, as you said, right. a pretty much freshman outfield out there. Correct call there for the second baseman to call that off and take it himself. One of the older players, well, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong line. No, that was a freshman that made the call and an eighth grader that uh, backed off at first base. Here's a fastball, he goes after, fouls it back into the wall. Nothing in two to count. At the plate is the pitcher, Billy Caldwell. Caldwell struck out looking in the second inning for his only at bat before this one. Uh oh. They got him caught in a rundown, and they're going to get him out at third. Hung on to the ball. A little bit of a collision there. They shake hands, but he hung on to the ball, and Jennings is caught stealing. for the second out. So that cleans the bases. No one on with two away. And Caldwell at the plate on a nothing in two count. This popped up, out of play, straight back, out of bounds. A nice job, not, not just by the third baseman, mm -hmm. uh, but by the shortstop who, who dug that throw out. He wasn't covering, uh, but he got there and dug it out and then made a nice throw. The shortstop for that, that you were speaking of is CNO. One ball, two strikes. This ground ball down the third baseline, it'll be foul. Becknell bare hands it, picks it up, flips it back to his pitcher. This pitch up high, ball two, two balls, two strikes, two outs. <coughs> this pitch misses inside. Yeah, that pickoff was similar to the one we saw Patterson attempt a couple of innings ago, both times a pitcher with a good move, but nobody covering the base. Each pitcher adjusted his throw it worked for St. James. It did not work for Patterson. The full count pitch was up high for ball four. So Caldwell will draw a walk, go to first base. That'll bring to the plate the DH, Kobe Marcel. He struck out swinging in the second inning. First pitch at the knees for call, strike one. Swing and a miss, strike two. Kind of hacked at that breaking ball as it was dropping. It had a big drop, like almost one of them falling off the table kind of stuff. 
This off the end of the bat, but right at the second baseman comes up clean, makes a throw, and that's wrong. So the ground ball to second base for the third out. So after four complete innings of play, Wildcats nine, Lumberjacks zero. We mentioned coming into this game, St. James 22nd in the power ratings for Division three non-select. Patterson, excuse me, did I say 22nd? 22nd is correct. <laughs> uh, Patterson is 24th and Berwick not far behind at 26th. So everybody right in there trying to either grab or hang on to a little piece of the playoff pie. Mm -hmm. West St. Mary's right there as well at 27. I, uh, I think I said uh, four complete, but actually we're in the middle of the fourth. That is correct. If it were four complete, I would be reading sponsors right now. Yeah. <laughs> But it's the middle of the fourth. Wildcats sent nine hitters to the plate in the third. And, and uh, they'll start it off in the exact same place. And Patterson sends a new pitcher out there. Is that 16 or 18? Uh, I'm thinking 18. which is Jaden Hillebrand. All right. 16 is Cameron Marine. Both yeah. have pitched this year. Yeah, that looks like it's Hillebrand. Get you his line. I don't know, did Gravelock, uh, or rather Caldwell, come out of the game? I didn't notice. I can't tell where he is right now if he's still in the game. This will be Hillebrand's sixth appearance uh, all in relief. He's given up four hits with four strikeouts, but 14 walks. 1.235 ERA. Uh, but with all those walks, that's kind of indicative that he's not given uh, he's not giving batters much to much to hit. Today's starting. Pitcher, bats clean up, and he is coming to hit for the Wildcats. He is two for two on the day with a do two doubles and one run scored. <laughs> Lama Jacks will have to do something they have not done yet today, and that's hold the Wildcats scoreless or if they want to keep this game alive, they need to score. They'll put pressure on them to score at least one in the top. This pitch misses inside for a ball one. Swing and a miss at the curveball for strike one. One ball, one strike. This pitch misses outside for a ball two. This also misses outside for ball three. Three balls, one strike. This line drive down the third base line, but it's going to be foul. That'll run the count full. Three balls, two strikes. Well, Gravois just sat back and turned on that nicely. This pitch actually went behind him for ball four. So Gravois will draw the walk. He'll go to first base with nobody out. That'll send Cam LeBlanc, the left fielder, to the plate. LeBlanc is one for two today. 
He struck out in the first, and he singled in the third. This pitch is low and inside for ball one. On deck, first baseman Andrew Mahler. The 2 0 pitch. Hillbrand in the stretch goes to first. First baseman Howard didn't come up with the catch, but stayed close. And now Gravel is a little bit beat up over there. He gets up slowly. Yeah, remember this is also your starting pitcher out there. And he's got a shutout going through four innings. He gives his coach a thumbs up. Yeah. He says he's good to go. This foul back into the net. That didn't sound like it hit bat. Well, maybe not. It sounded like it hit shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Strike two. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out and a runner on first. Nine nothing, Wildcats lead. Looking to pick up that 10 run lead right here. This pitch goes behind the batter. And runner Gravois goes to second base. So now you have a full count. <laughs> With no outs, runner on second. This ground ball down third base in fair territory. Scooped up as Jennings makes the throw to first. Gets the out at first base. However, Gravois, the 10th run, the 10 run lead goes to third with one away. Nice play, a Jennings charged the ball hard, made the catch. His only play was at first base. Yeah, he couldn't he wait on that. Yeah. So with one away, first baseman, eighth grader, Andin Mahler. It's a call strike one. Mahler is 0 for 1 today. He struck out in the first and walked and scored a run in the third. And Pinhu coming up on that nice one. catch. And he did catch it. It looked like he did. Made the catch out there. Might be why he was switched out for his defense. And now I can see the number. It is, it's, it's not 27, it's seven. That's Lindsey Howard. Or maybe Howard moved over there. Because he was already in the lineup, right? Right, he was on first. I thought we had a different first baseman, but I couldn't pick up the number. And couldn't really see him. So uh, if that's seven, that would be Howard. Yep. So now it's two outs with a runner on third base. And at the plate is right fielder Noah Landry. Nice backhanded catch by Bird on the short hop. He didn't make that catch. That tenth run may have scored. Remember that one, Chris. It's filed away. Yep. Three and zero. Oh. Uh, he he definitely would have would have scored. Yep. Because he took his, you know, he took a few steps off, and even if he you know, he didn't come up with it, but he trapped it. Gravois mm -hmm. was going. Landry walks on four pitches. So that'll put runners on first and third with two outs. And coming to the plate is the eight-hole hitter, second baseman, Landon Rome. Rome has struck out twice looking, once in the second and once in the third. The 
Runner's going to go to second place, second base, and I think we had a balk. Mm. Had a balk, which means all runners move up. And that run that's been on third base for a while has scored, giving the Wildcats a 10-0 lead. This pitch gets away from Bird. Landry will advance to third. He'll stand there with two outs and a 1 0 count on the pitcher, Rome. Rome is a freshman. As we mentioned earlier, Everybody that's starting today will be back on this team next year. This pitch gets away from Bird and sliding in underneath the throw is Landry. And Wildcats now up 11-0. Count two and oh on land in Rome. This pitch misses inside for ball three. Three balls, no strikes. Two outs, bases are empty. Eight oh eight hole hitter, second baseman, land in Rome at the plate. Looking for his first hit of the day. And he gets to look at a 3-0 pitch. Squares the bunt, but pretty much everybody knew he was taking that one all the way, and it is ball four. So, Coach Dore is gonna go out. He'll pull Hildebrand. And Looks like it's going to be a uh, third baseman. Yep. That's Jennings. He's coming in to make some changes. Oh, um, you know what? It might be the first baseman that's going to go to the mound. Yeah. And maybe Jennings is moving to first base, maybe. That's why he was changing gloves. Well, they've, they've both pitched a little bit this season. Yeah. And now he's calling the right fielder in. We're just yeah. moving people all over the place. Everywhere, yeah, that was, Marine was out in right field. I'm assuming he was still out there. That'll bring him in, the infield. And let's see what these change, see if we can pick up these numbers. Well, I would think if it were Marine or Bobe, they'd already be throwing their warm-ups. Yeah, I agree with you. Now it's VJ Bird coming out. Bird was catching before, right? Right, yeah, he was the catcher. All right, so it's gonna be Bird coming to the mound right. and I'm going to bet that Jennings, Jennings gonna go is going, behind, going to catch her. Right, right. going to be behind the plate. And we'll see if we can figure out who's going to go to third base. This is Bird's seventh appearance of the season. He's pitched, he's only pitched 11.2 innings, but he's got four starts. So even in starting appearances, he hasn't been out there long. 9.6 ERA, 11 strikeouts and 18 walks. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning, two outs, two runs have scored, and there's a runner on first base. Nine hole hitter is coming to the plate. That's Brandon Ciano. <coughs> He was hit by a pitch and scored a run and also reached on a fielder's choice. Let's thank Lapco Manufacturing. Feel safe, work smart, look good with Lapco FR, www.lapco.com. 
Taco Bell and Morgan City and Bayou Vista. Open late night, delivery through DoorDash. Bayou Bend Fitness Center, 1209 Northwest Boulevard in Franklin. A healthier you begins at Bayou Bend. Conrad Industries, serving St. Mary Parish and the Marine Industry since 1948. Conrad wishes all of our local teams good luck. And core physical therapy and sports performance here to restore the quality of life you deserve. 611 Brasher Avenue in Morgan City. Okay, Rochelle, who was at second base, I think is now at third. And I think that might be Marine at second base. If that's that's 16. right. Is that 16? Yes. Yeah. And somebody went to right field. Bird's first pitch is a ball. Second pitch misses inside for a ball two. Wildcats up 11 nothing over the Lumberjacks. This is down the middle of the plate for a call strike one. New pitcher, he's going to uh, look at him till he sees a strike. Now he's seen two of them. Two balls, two strikes, yep. two outs. Time to move on. the bat. <laughs> Full count. Three balls, two strikes on C and O to shortstop. This is a line drive. It's going to bounce in front of the left field. Uh, by him. By him. So one run's going to score. C and O will stop at second base. We'll give him a single, and the run scores on the error. So c &O gets his first hit of the day. And we'll move to the top of the batting order where Cade Becknell will come to the plate. Becknell is two, four, three, two, uh, a double, a single, and a fly ball to right field. Bird's first pitch to Becknell is ball one. c &O taking a huge lead off second. Well, they're not holding him on. And this is a little soft liner, but it gets over the shortstop's head. They're going to send the runner home. We could have a play, but nope. Runner will score standing up. Becknell will get a single to take second on the throw home. Wildcats up 13-0. That'll bring to the plate center fielder, Liam Kosnov. He walked once, singled, and doubled, scored one run. Koznav is the center fielder. One of the old guys out there. He's a junior. They call He's, that a grizzled veteran. Right. Two balls, one strike, two outs. Runner on second base. Gets under this one, pops it up. Left field, short left field. Runner comes up, makes the catch for the third out. So Koznov flies out to left for the third out. So now we have played four complete innings of play. And after four <coughs> innings, the Wildcats lead the Lumberjacks by the score of 13 to nothing. Our right, thanks to Patterson State Bank, free checking, great rates, low down payment home options, and the best in mobile banking, PSB, quality community banking since 1925. GJCurbside.com, your complete online grocery store, including local and regional products. Check our website for delivery options from our curb to yours, GJ Curbside. Oshner St. Mary, quality health care, close to home. Lafayette Electric, 1207 Greenwood Street in Morgan City. Proud supporter of high school baseball in the Tri-City area. 
And Allen's Communications, locally owned TV, cable, internet, and telephone service. Call 384-8335. Wildcats picked up uh, four runs on two hits and three walks. Tough task here. Need four runs to keep the game alive. That's pitcher. what they got to have so far against this uh, pitcher. Grab while they haven't been able to push anything across. Chance Rochelle, Chance Rochelle is going to come up and pinch hit. This will be his, possibly be his first official at bat of the year. He is batting for the right fielder, Cameron Marine. Just a sophomore. Ground ball into the third base dugout. Patterson's not as young as St. James, but they've still got a lot of sophomores and freshmen out here. I think we have we might have a, a batting issue here. Uh, batter might be batting out of order because he is starting off with Chance Rochelle, who's a nine hole hitter. And the eight hole hitter is Cameron Marine. If he came out early, they batting out of order. Let's see how we're gonna straighten this out. I think, uh, help me out, Chris, but I think he only threw him one pitch, or did he? he yeah, did, he only he threw him one. one pitch. And it was a strike. Noah House will come out. Yeah. So Cameron Marine is at the plate. I'm sorry, 16, not 15. Yeah, that's that's Marine, the right fielder, who moved, started out of yeah, right field. That's where he's at. No, and moved to second base. And Marine grounds out for the first out. All right, now Rochelle, and he gets a clean slate. This hit high to center field. Center fielder drifts back. That's uh, Koznov back there, and he makes the catch for the second out. Nice play. We'll move the Lumberjacks to the top of the batting order. And Christian Bobbitt will come to the plate. He grounded to third and struck out. Wow, that pitch looked pretty good, Chris. But it's a ball. I thought so, too. That was a breaking ball. He might have broke a little late. There's a fastball, though. That's right down no the pipe. No doubt. Bobbitt has to get on base safe to keep this game alive. And he does. Hit it on the handle, but he got it in the hole between uh, short and third. And he singles. So with two outs, Bobbitt will stand on first base with uh, shortstop Landon Bernadou coming to the plate. Bernadou is one for one. He walked in the first and he singled in the third. He came into the game hitting 275. This pitch misses low and away for ball one. And even 
and this one was a little bit too far outside, so ball two, two and oh to count, two outs. Runner on first base. And that one catches the corner for strike one, two balls, one strike. Ground ball hit to third, makes the catch over to first in time for the third out. And Chris, I believe that will complete That's this ball game. game. Yep. So the Lumberjacks will go down in five innings by a final score of 13 nothing. Wildcats will walk away with a win. These two teams will play again on, I think it is, April the 9th in Patterson. And that one will count as a district game. Today's game does not. Disappointing outing for the Lumberjacks who've been kind of on the upswing for the past few weeks. But today, they, uh, the hits were few and far between and they didn't do anything with them when they had them on the base paths. In fact, got a couple of people thrown out on base. Made some mistakes on defense. There, there really weren't many errors, but more kind of mental errors, misplaying some balls that they might have, should have had. Uh, but give credit to St. James. Gravois pitched a fine game. St. James put the ball on the bat and did what you're supposed to do when that happens. You know, think, uh, one thing, Gary, we're going to be a little ceremony, I think, here after the ball game, but we want to quickly get in. The reason for it is... Uh, Assistant coach Gary Grow has been doing battle with uh, a blood cancer. And if we uh, noticed that, that the team actually played in t-shirts today and on the back of their t-shirts is, is printed the words, fight like grow. In other words, to recognize their assistant coach that they have a lot of love and respect for. And uh, he was not aware of the fact that they were gonna do that until they took their jerseys off. And uh, they had their regular game jerseys on prior, and then just for the game, they took their jerseys off and, and showed what they were wearing on the back of their shirt. So, uh, a little ceremony. He's going to have his family came yeah, out here. Yeah, his family's today. coming out onto right. the field now. Right, and he was uh, he was not aware of any of this uh, until just this this until it started. Actually, well, the shirts he saw at the beginning of the game, and the ceremony is something new. And another thing, if you notice, Chris, the lumberjacks are coming out to also recognize Coach Grow. So, tremendous show of uh, respect from yeah. the Lumberjacks as nice well. Nice gesture from right. Coach Dore and the Lumberjacks. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, coaches, it, it's, it's a fraternity. Yep. They're all in it together, and uh, they back each other up through uh, the good times and the bad times as well. Let's thank our sponsors one more time real quick. Lapco Manufacturing. Taco Bell in Morgan City and Bayou Vista, Bayou, Bit Bayou Bend Fitness Center, Conrad Industries, Core Physical Therapy and Sports Performance, Patterson State Bank, Curbs GJCurbside.com, Oshner St. Mary, Lafayette Electric, and Allen's Communications. We're going to be back with you Tuesday, coming to you from cutoff as the Assumption Mustangs visit the South Lafouche Tarpons. That game will start at 6 o'clock right here on KWBJ Live. All right, folks, we hope you enjoyed our game today. We are very, very glad that you joined us today and uh, look forward to a couple, at least two games uh, next week. Uh, weather allow. It should be better than it was this week. And uh, thank you for joining us. My, my name is Aaron Ortigo. I'm here with Chris Hunter. We're in Vashry, where the St. James Wildcats have defeated the Patterson Lumberjacks by the final score of 13 to 0. Thank you for joining us.